guys recognize this part. We saw this yesterday. This is actually where we ended the vlog, so. Anybody need a pasta hat or a godfather apron? So if you're a Patreon and you saw my lens from last night, well, I guess when you're watching this, it would have been about five days ago. I went into a hotel and if that hotel's still, or I mean, if I'm in the right place and the hotel's up here, I'm gonna go in and show you. They had a Vespa in there with a Roman holiday placard above it and I was joking on there. I'm like, I wonder if that's the real one or not. A little something to add to this vlog is inside here. So I could see this in the window last night when I was walking around and I was like, I wonder if this is actually the real one. Because since it was filmed here, you'd think, eh, it wouldn't be that unthinkable. And I know they've had art shows here or like museum deals about Roman Holiday where they've had the Vespa, but I looked it up. This is not the original Vespa because the original Vespa that she rode with Gregory Peck on the back was actually green. And it's the oldest known Vespa apparently in the world and it just sold at auction in 2017 for like a quarter of a million dollars, so. Pretty cool though, this is kind of an old, very similar style one that she would have, they would have been riding. Look right up there at the top of that pillar. My favorite street artist and Jaws middle name, there's a Space Invader, let's go take a look. Actually, Banksy's probably my favorite street artist, but Space Invader's my second. All right, I had to break down and buy an umbrella for three euros. Take a look at that. Wow. Beautiful. Let's get a little closer, shall we? Oh, that's cool. It's like a, a ship coming out of this, you can see here. Kind of weird lighting today, but... Look, they even have military over here. Standing guard. Very cool. Yeah, We'll have to switch lenses for that guy. Well, I don't think this lens is going to cut it. I think we're going to have to go with the big dog. I want to see his face. That is so cool. This men on chariots with the horses in action. God, I love it. Now this is why we got this lens. Watch this. Now I recognize that statue, that's called the Sacrifice. Look at that fountain. Two quasi-gladiators. Take a look at this. Kind of amazing that's still left. Oh, I think we're gonna have to stop and take a look at all this. It's pretty cool architecture up there.
so what this theater was, was this was an open air theater that was around pretty much right at the end of the Republic, when it was all ending, the fall of it all. And they didn't do battles or anything here. This was more like song and performance theater. I know, it looks a lot like the Colosseum, right? It's not, though. There's some more of the theater. So apparently they have an underground city here, too. You're probably wondering at this point, are we ever going to get to the places you were thinking of going today? I don't know. I keep finding cool stuff along the way. So what this is, is this is a, a temple that's been here since 3th or 4th century BC. Look at those great columns. And take a gander at that one, that circular one. So that's what that temple would have looked back in the bustling days. Well, we made it. So what we came to see is actually right on the other side of this. Well, in Roman Holiday, you see this over the shoulder of Gregory Peck and Audrey Hepburn. When they come into the Mouth of Truth, they actually go in this gate, which they don't let you go in now, but it's right there and we're gonna go. The Mouth of Truth. Always a line, thanks to that movie. The legend is that if you're given to lying, you put your hand in there, It'll be bitten off. Now the legend is, if you're given to lie, you put your hand in there, you'll be bitten right off. <laughs> yep, we had to come. We had to come. I decided to come inside the actual church that the Mouth of Truth is in front of. Well, yeah, because they said that some of the artwork inside this church is some of the most beautiful in all of Rome. Now they actually have an underground here, so we're gonna go ahead and go. They do require a donation, which is fine. Look at this, look at this, look at this. So basically what this was saying was that this crypt of Adrian was dug inside of a tuft of blocks that they were able to research and find out that it went back to um, shortly, right around the time when the Republic would have been ending um, in the fire of 213 BC and when they did the excavation they were able to trace it back that it would have actually been part of the altar of Hercules. Pretty interesting. This is the only thing in the underground is the Crypt of Adrian, so... We're gonna head out of here and go to our next stop. I'm glad I made a stop here. That was great. Can you tell they're proud? Let's buy a couple of postcards to uh, help support them. And they actually sell mouths of truth that you can buy and take home. So 
I'm gonna go ahead and get one. I actually got a couple of cool things in there, so some lion hearts are gonna be getting some things. So this site right here used to be called the, well, I mean, it's the ruins of the Church of Oabono. And this was a church that literally was like right on the Tiber River. We're, we're literally maybe not even a half block away from it. And so during the Republic, this was raised very early on because of flooding. And then in like the 1930s, an archeologist came and was digging around, fishing around, snooping around, and uncovered all this. Look at the columns. And that's what it was rebuilt into. It actually said that after it was raised, this whole area around it had been uh, repaved with marble. So imagine the surprise when they started digging around and finding all this under there. All right, we are now on our way to the Fountain de Trevi, the Trevi Fountain, so I can throw some coins in there to make sure I get to come back. Now, the only downside to Rome, I'm gonna be straight up with you guys, the part that I am absolutely hating about it is that the people that live here that are trying to milk the tourist are relentless. You almost can't walk around a corner without some guy dressed up in a Roman outfit trying to con five euros out of you for a picture or the other one is like a lot of um, African guys walking around here. They want to give you a high five or they want to give you a handshake or whatever and then they put a bracelet in your hand and then they ask you if you got a girlfriend or a wife then they try and give her a bracelet and then they, they get real close and real creepy. I've seen them do it numerous times and then they go Hey, can I get five euro for my son? He's starving. And I'm like, oh boy. I saw so many tourists getting hit up for that, so that's a big, big annoyance here for me. Nice shirt. Look how talented this guy is. He does these out of watercolor. Isn't that amazing? He just literally, he's just sitting here doing them right here. Oh, interesting. Look at that right over there. They've got a fake mouth of truth. I could have saved myself the half an hour wait in line. <laughs> We're actually going this way. Next stop, Trevi Fountain. Planet of the Thriller. What in tarnation are those? Those are creepier than the flying monkeys from Wizard of Oz. Wow. Roma. They're even trying to get Disney into the game here. Wow, isn't this beautiful? Right here on a street corner. Well, things are certainly getting more interesting and a lot more crowded, so we're close. There it is. Holy Moses, what a beauty. Let's take a look at this first. So, the legend is you're supposed to throw some coins over your shoulder to ensure that you get to come back. So if I can ever make my way through this mess, I'm gonna. Well, here we go guys. I'm gonna stop in and have some lunch here. Got a slice of pizza and uh, and a little bit of half a sandwich. I know I feel like I'm eating for two, right? So I know because of how crowded it is out here, it's really hard to tell. But before I leave, if I don't match this up, somebody's gonna complain about it. So if you like the movie La Dolce Vita, they actually come down the stairs right there and she gets in the fountain right there.
and then he sits right over there, right there, on the edge of the, uh, the thing. I'll go over and show it to you real quick. So he ends up sitting right here in the movie. And since it's the biggest fountain in the world, I figured nobody would really complain if I spent a little extra time taking it all in, because it's magnificent, really. It really is. Man. The details are just what blows me away. And you know what? It's even crazier is you know there's some crazy nut like me out in the world that if they had the money, they would have this in their backyard. Now the deepest lens I have. And then of course in La Dolce Vita she would have been underneath the water pretty much taking a shower. <laughs> I don't necessarily know anybody that would need this that's a huge fan of this movie, but uh, 10 euros for that bag, and it's pretty big. Wow, this is not what I was looking for, but I don't mind stumbling into cool stuff. I will never complain about that. Oh, that's hilarious. What happened to his head? Look at this. You can get your picture with Pinocchio. Oh, and this one you can put your own face in there. Interesting. Wow, look at this wooden motorcycle. Wicked. Everything in here is wooden. Wow, this is like a kid's heaven. Geppetto up there. Oh, yeah. Oh, that is awesome. Look, Geppetto's workshop. I love this. This is so cool. Uh, once again, something I didn't know I was going to stumble into. That's why you got to walk when you go on trips. Oh, no. Of course. Well, the rain's kicked in and we're going to call it a night. Thank you to Ann Nelson and everyone else. I'll see y'all tomorrow. Goodbye.